powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Reesinger. And I'm Janelle Slade. A lot of backroom maneuvering at the Montana Legislature today as the finish line draws near. It's a lot of hurry up and wait on this next to final day of the session as Montana's elected lawmakers decide what will pass and what won't. It's the 11th hour for some big dollar bills, many of which are pieces and parts of original bills voted out earlier in the session. Those portions now slid in and attached to bills that are still alive. Among the surviving bills, statewide preschool funding, Coal Strip Power, a new Heritage Center, and the state's biggest bill, the budget. The budget bill would carry the state through mid-year of 2021. The multi-billion dollar deal has faced a number of hurdles along the way, leading to a scramble here at the end. If it doesn't pass in this current session, legislators will be forced to call a special session and find a fix. The bill to authorize construction of a new $48 million Montana Historical Society Museum in Helena survived another vote today. The House Appropriations Committee voted 16 to 6 to approve the bill, sending it back to the House floor for one last vote. This bill increases the state lodging tax from three to four percent to help finance the museum and other grants for historical museums and sites across the state. Well, more speed bumps in the lawsuit against the United States government and TransCanada over the Keystone XL pipeline. Rosebud Sioux Tribe and Fort Belknap Indian Community filed the original complaint back in September. An amended complaint has just been filed in federal court. It states that by issuing the 2019 permit, the government has failed to protect, shield, or defend the tribes. Now this includes protecting the treaty rights, natural resources, land, water, and cultural places from waste. The tribes are asking for the court to stop the government and TransCanada until they comply with the law. Plans are moving forward for the future Lockwood High School. In fact, 108th graders, the class of 2023, registered for school just last week. Q2's David J standing by now with more on how plans are coming along. David. Uh, Danielle Russ, uh, Superintendent Tobin Navazio says the board will be looking to hire coaches and administrators at its next board meeting. And construction of the $49.9 million high school is on schedule. Lockwood schools uh, posted on social media that crews have put up the first walls and poured uh, floors for part of the building. Construction started in February and the Freshman Academy will be ready this fall. The rest of the high school will be ready and finished in the fall of 2020. Those 8th graders will make up the very first freshman class with basic courses. Navazio uh, expects about 550 students for the 2022-23 year. And Langless Associates, a company building the school, has also recently built other schools in Billings. Probably working on schools is one of the most fun commercial projects to work on. It's excitement from a little kid standpoint to get these buildings, whether it's a grade school kid all the way up through high school. I mean, everybody's excited. The entire community gets involved with these schools. This is a a big upbeat spirit lifting type project so they're very enjoyable to work on. Also last week the sideline store set up the Lockwood Lions official online store for Lockwood High School Lions sweatshirts and t-shirts. Russ, Janelle? Thanks so much, David. All right, turning to weather, Bob, some showers on and off today, but you're here to tell us that you and the rest of the weather team are prepared for any serious weather that does come our way. It was a very good day today, kind of, a, you know, it's been a while since we've seen severe weather, so we're all a little on the rusty side, so we kind of got together today and just kind of tried to talk about what was going to happen, and so what we did, we found out basically that uh, we're all a little rusty, but we did discuss some ways to get all this important weather information to you faster and on the screens that you prefer, places like the TV, the online, the mobile, also uh, the digital platform, but we discovered that the best way to get all of this down and the best way to get to it is basically download your free Q2 weather app. That's the best thing to do because we have all of our severe weather information going through this thing on out to you. And so I tell you what, that's the best way. It's free at Google Play and also at the App Store, and it's just called Q2 Weather. Go ahead and download it. You're going to be glad you did. All right. Well, okay. thanks so much, Bob. Well, two of the state's most iconic roads will soon be open for travel. Plow crews today is making their way up the Beartooth Highway, as you can see, tackling the tallest part of this drift, which stood about 18 feet high. The walls of snow even higher in other areas. Yeah, crews hope to have the road cleared and open for Memorial Day weekend. Typically, that's when the pass reopens, but as we all know, there's still plenty of time for Mother Nature to throw a little wrench in things. Meanwhile, on the other side of the state, crews are getting closer and closer to opening Glacier National Park for the 2019 season. Crews working the west side of going to the Sun Road are 
are about four miles away from Logan Pass. Now, these photos taken April 15th on a fairly snowy day, as you can see. Plows are also advancing up the east side of the road. Over the years, Alert Helicopter out of Kalispell has saved countless lives. And tonight, MTN's Marin Sue spoke with one skier who thanks them for saving his life over 30 years ago. It was here at Whitefish Mountain Resort, back then Big Mountain, that Ken Stein's life changed forever. It was February 18th, 1989. 23-year-old ski fanatic Ken Stein and some close friends were taking their last run of the day. And it was a little foggy, so there was a cat track in the halfway down and that I hit the cat track and did a flip and landed on my head. From there, it was all a blur. I broke C2, 3, and 4 in six places, two in each vertebrae. Stein's college roommate performed CPR, and he was airlifted by alert helicopter to Kalispell Hospital. Back then, Kalispell had no neurosurgeons on staff, and Stein didn't realize how bad his injuries actually were. I had had hell-roaring chili for lunch that was giving me really bad heartburn, and so <laughs> then I... Uh, I asked him if he could just give me some Tums or milk of magnesia or something, and he said no. And I, I said to him, well, why are you trying to save my life when I'm going to die a heartburn? And doctors never told Stein the extent of his injuries. For six weeks, Stein was paralyzed from the neck down, and it was a long road to recovery, reteaching himself the basics. Was able to move one toe once, like, it was like a monumental effort. Stein was determined being paralyzed wasn't an option for him. It took five months before he was up and walking without crutches following his accident. Today, Stein still lives with the impacts of February 18th, 1989. My balance isn't very good. My gait is way off. The feeling in my feet and my hands is not very good. He's thankful to be up and walking. While Stein doesn't ski anymore, he spends his time golfing with his wife and grandson, Alex. This weekend, Kalispell Regional Medical Center is holding its annual alert fundraising banquet that raises funds for the helicopter program that was one of many components that saved Ken Stein's life. In Whitefish, I'm Martin Sue, MTN News. Alert flies anywhere from roadside to mountainside to transport patients when seconds between life and death matter the most. Volunteers for Disc Golf Billings busy with dirt and cement at Pioneer Park today. They are working on a course improvement project, replacing the nine baskets at the park. Disc Golf Billings fundraised the entire $5,000 cost for these improvements. It's like an uh, inexpensive sport for everyone. Once you have the disc, it's free to go to the park and just play. So we love it. Now the club will debut the new baskets on May 5th for the second round of its Spring Fling Disc Golf Tournament. Questions in your bathroom cabinet? If so, National Drug Take Back Day is coming up April 27th, giving you a way to responsibly and anonymously dispose of those unused medications. Rimrock's Lynette Kosevich appeared on Montana this morning to stress the importance of properly disposing old drugs. You know, a lot of times when people have surgeries or some ailments of some kind, they may have excess drugs. They don't feel the need to continue to stay, particularly on a painkiller. And that's something that most doctors do recommend. You know, when their pain is under control, they should stop taking, um, especially if it's a narcotic. Um, so often they have leftover pills lying around their house, and it's, it's, it's really a safety issue. You don't want anybody else to be taking drugs that aren't prescribed for them. Locations where people can anonymously dispose of unused or expired prescriptions are the Billings Elks Lodge, 934 Lewis Avenue, First Interstate Bank at 730 Main Street. There are also MedSafe drop box locations at the Billings Clinic, St. Vincent Healthcare Pharmacy, and Riverstone Health Pharmacy. And for more information on the day, you can visit rimrock.org. Well, time is running out to take a personal tour through the 2019 Billing St. Jude Dream Home before it belongs to someone else. Coming up on Sunday, May 5th, one lucky ticket holder will win this half a million dollar classic design home in the Ironwood subdivision. All of the St. Jude 
prize drawings will happen on Sunday, May 5th, live here on Q2 from 5 until 6 p.m. As the anticipation draws near, this is your last weekend to visit the house at 4204 Snowy Woods Drive. Saturday's open house runs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 5. And just for touring the house, you can enter a chance to win a $10,000 home makeover package at Ferguson Enterprises. Entry for that drawing is entirely free. And a huge thank you to our community and region for purchasing all 6,500 tickets one month early. All right, coming up on tonight's 530 News, the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame is looking for your nomination for whose time in the saddle should get some spotlight. And in sports, Scott checks in with two of the state's best hurdlers at Huntley Project. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.